Uh, good evening. Ev Hello. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our uh, Thursday evening budget workshop here. Um, you know, if I can have our audience members uh, also silence their cell phones, that'd just be wonderful. And um, if you uh, two can please introduce yourselves, then please take it away. Certainly, Mr. Mayor. Heather Hunter, City Administrator. Tracy Rory, Finance Director. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council. Um, this I put together a new kind of platform for you to go through, um, kind of revisiting where we started from. So in the upper right corner is what the budget originally started at, at the 3446. The first round of adjustments that you had brought it down to 3109, or a $2.59 tax rate increase. Um, at the last meeting, we talked about what it would take to get to 30, $30.75 and on down the line. So you'll see the little table on the left there at the top shows you what would need to be reduced for each one of those tax rates. It's assuming that the school will get down to $1.34 which means that budget adjustment of just under $800,000 that we've been talking about. Um, they were not available this week, so I guess they are meeting Monday, and it looks positive that hopefully that they could move forward with that. So if you look at the table and then back out the school piece, um, obviously <coughs> the first two means that we're already under those $2 amounts. So then we're starting at cuts or reductions that would get us down to 30.50, down to $30 even. Then the second piece of this is taking into consideration the pros and cons of what various members of the council um, had indicated at our last meeting. So one discussion talked about revenue sharing being at 90%. So under option one, you will see what the state is indicating as Lewiston's estimated revenue sharing for next year of $11,897,689. 90% of that is $10,707,920. Right now, between what was in the initial budget and what the first round of an adjustments, we already have booked nine million one hundred and thirty six thousand four eighty five so to bring it up to ninety percent means we have a million five hundred and seventy one thousand four hundred and thirty five dollars which is a seventy one cents on the tax rate so if we go that amount this is a level that i'm not a hundred percent comfortable with and i don't believe tracy is as either that there's pros and cons to that. Obviously, the pro is it keeps the workforce and it keeps operations relatively at the level that they are now. The con is it's a risk from a revenue standpoint. So to mitigate that risk, I would request that we reserve that portion of fund balance. So if we were to not have that amount come to fruition. We have that set aside in fund balance, so between curtailment efforts and fund balance, we have the ability to still have a balanced budget. To do that, I would need five votes on the budget. And just to be clear, Administrator, you're looking for the fund balance reserve to be the difference between the 77% and 90%, which would be the 1.5? Correct. Excellent, thank Correct. you. So, to move forward, we have a few adjustments that have come out after kind of combing through everything and listening to um, the parking lot list that you provided. So you will see not only under option one do you have the revenue sharing, you also have five additional adjustments. One is to add back the Maine Veterans Memorial Cemetery request. The other is there was um, a labeling error in maintenance and licensing in our MIS department. Those actually represented cameras, not maintenance and licensing. So those can be legitimately pulled out and funded through fund balance. 
Also, we were in the process of evaluating and adjusting the healthcare educator program. So this resulted in a savings of $27,546. As we move through various negotiations and look at what it is estimated to move forward for various um, contract settlements, the non-union and so forth, it is estimated that there will be an additional $125,508 in salary reserve savings. And then lastly, the library got their estimated grant amount from the state for their temporary wages, so there, there was an additional $800 from that standpoint. So taking those two pieces into play, your first, or actually it's technically the second gray box, or the first gray box underneath that on the right, you will see that option one <coughs> brings the tax rate down to $29.90. Well under the CPI Urban Northeast, as well as showing the city at a zero tax rate increase. And this is, uh, I see it here, the 134. This is yes. uh, assuming that the school is going to... Uh, all but, this is yeah. based upon the school doing their piece. All of the options. All of the options. Okay, thank you. Option two, which starts at the bottom of the first page, reduces the revenue sharing confidence level down to 85%. That drops the 1.57 down to $976,551. Again, we will still reserve fund balance. It would still require five votes. You still have your first five adjustments. And if we stop there, I take that back. The last one adjusts the <coughs> library staff to go to their re staff requested to be closed to the public on Monday and have the same part-time staff. So that saves about $12,000. So that brings the tax rate to $30.16 and the state, or I'm sorry, the city's tax rate increase is 26 cents. Overall, it's a 5.8, again, under the CPI Urban Northeast. Option 2A shows you what would be needed to get to $30 even with that reduced revenue sharing. So we are reducing advertising by additional 10,000. We are phasing in various vacant positions. There would be no elimination of any filled position. All of these would be vacant positions that we would phase in the hiring dates. So the first one, you are freezing a mechanic, you're freezing a highway worker, you're phasing in two highway workers starting at October 1st. Under fire, we're removing one arm in, and that's the net effect of adding back $30,500 in overtime. We would hire the inspector at October 1st. We would look at hiring the assessor on January 1st. We currently have a vacancy in library. We would look at reducing that to the 40 hours that was requested last meeting. And we would eliminate any contingency in the salary reserve. That gets us down to $30, or a 5.3% increase, 10 cents on the city side. I will share with you all of the adjustments that were talked about in the fund balance have been kind of re-slotted. If you look at the second kind of listing, the one that's second to the last, <coughs> that talks about our fund balance. Go all the way to the end. We would be using 11,790,370 but if you notice, that number right above there is assuming the 90% model 
of the state revenue sharing, because that would be the worst case scenario. That gets us down to a fund balance coverage of 10.16, leaving about a quarter of a million dollars left to get to the 10% sweet spot. The last page talks about the LCIP. This one I was not so successful on getting under any balance, so you will have to provide further guidance. We essentially have all of the school projects. Again, I have not been able, I'm on the last page. We have not been able to get with the school side to see if they can massage any of their projects. But we are down to four projects being funded on the city side, as you will see there. Using the 80% model, we are still over the limit by about $5.9 million. Um, Councilor McCarthy asked me last week to kind of model it using a 95% threshold. So that bumps our debt limit, or our debt, yes, I'm sorry, our debt limit from essentially 7.3 to about 8.7. Still doesn't help us. The last piece is looking at the inflation calculator. So we adopted this ordinance back in 2011. And if you look at inflation from between then and now, it rose about 34%. So that's where you see that third column. And it still doesn't get us there. So we're just, you know, about $3.4 million above the limit even using that model. So that kind of walks you through the five pages. I'd be happy to address any questions you would have. Councilor Herman. Thank you. Um, so on the, the first two pages, option one has 90% confidence on the revenue sharing, and two is 85%. Is 2A also 85%? 2A is also 85%. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. And how much is in fund balance uh, right now? Fund balance right now? Yeah. It is, well, we go by unallocated, so it's like 27 and change. And you're saying that you also haven't um, spoken with Jay? 27 million 589 is what we, what we use for a snapshot. It's the undesignated unassigned. It's okay. not total fund balance. Correct, right. I'm uh, sorry, your second question? Oh, was um, you're saying you still need to talk to the superintendent about um, their capital improvement request? That would be correct. So it could be that they uh, uh, come down on their requests? It could be. Yes, okay. This is the worst case scenario right. on still. Councilor Scott. So we have a finance committee meeting on Monday at 2 o'clock. Um, for the school department and we will I will definitely be bringing that up as a conversation to see if there's any leeway in removing some of that LCIP for um, those things um, I also wanted to ask the so if we if we get the five votes for the revenue sharing the 1.5 that when you say goes in reserve that that's it can't be used for anything else it's going to be staying there just for that Cushion, I guess. It would, it would be relieved, if you will, as soon as we hit that mark Okay. On, on revenue sharing receipts. Okay. All right. If it doesn't look like we're going to, obviously, we would hold it the whole time. Right. Okay. All right. Councilor Herman. Thank you. Um, I guess just some thoughts about uh, about these different options. Um, I'm thinking about the library. I think we heard loud and clear from the public. Uh, I received 
emails from about two dozen people, and I think they went to just about everyone on the council, um, plus letters to the editor, people who spoke in public comment. Um, so I wouldn't support um, any of the cuts with the library. Um, I would be, personally, I'd be comfortable with, with option one, um, especially since that, if we're holding that amount that we're not sure about in fund balance, um, I think that's, that's prudent and I think that would work. Um, thanks. Uh, I think the state will be providing additional guidance um, here soon about uh, FY23 revenue sharing. And um, yes, and if, and if we are, we, we could be getting more in revenue sharing this fiscal year. And if so, that would also just head straight to fund balance, correct? In the current fiscal year, yes. Yes, okay. But I might add, we're also using what, $12 million? Just shy of $12 million in fund balance, too. Correct, yeah. So if we want to have something to use in 2025, that's a good thing. <coughs> right. Councillor Scott. So I just want to ask if, if I could, may ask Councillor Harriman, so you would be good with, the, with option one, the 2990? Is that what you're saying? That full option by having the five votes for that additional revenue yes uh, yes okay um, I guess my only question on that would be so that would not get us the fire inspector right that would have to be 2a or is that included in that it includes all positions that are budgeted now okay there are no okay. delaying there's no phasing in nothing it assumes operations as they currently are okay and I, and I would agree about the library um, I took a count today and I came up with 42 between emails that I got letters to the editor I mean that's probably one of the most responses we've gotten on anything so I feel that it's really an important thing to try to ensure that we keep um, I guess I would just ask the rest of the council their confidence level in vote, having that five votes to go to that 90% because I too, I mean, if we can make it to 2990 and still have the things that we need, I, I would be good with that. But I'd ask everybody else. Um, Councillor Councilor Jolanus. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I certainly concur with some of the comments made um, by um, Councillor Scott and Councillor Harriman, uh, but you know, and, and kudos to you know when I think about option one, the changes just made there. But my concern or my question, I guess, would be when we look at um, the change for the school. You know, they uh, so starting at uh, 1440, brought it down to 1267. Option one has it going down to 1231. So we're looking at a change of a, from a dollar seventy to a dollar thirty-four, and I'm just trying to get my head wrapped around like where would that come from at the school level, um, you know? I, because I what I heard them say was that the next thing that would happen would be positions being cut. So I understand about the eight hundred thousand thing that we're feeling optimistic about that, but I just wonder if you could speak to that. So the eight hundred thousand thing that we keep talking about <laughs> is that assumption right there it kind of um, on the left hand side that is my understanding from the school superintendent and I would look to Councillor Scott to affirm this is that is if that emergency legislation goes through for on special ed providership and if it did they would use fund balance to fund that so does that amount and I apologize for not knowing this. It's does, okay. that, does that amount, administrator, equate to the uh, drop of 170 to 134? That's exactly what it is. Okay, I'm comfortable then with option one. Okay. And if I may add to that. So with the dollar 34, if that's just that $800,000 for that special private, private school, just that piece alone, that did include us being able to put the two SEL 
um, educators in the elementary school. It kept $500,000 for the special education, for the other piece that we had talked about before. And it, it kept all those other pieces in place without eliminating any new positions. Right. So, and that's what I was trying to get at. So yeah. your explanation helps me understand. So I, I would um, also agree with um, option one. And um, just to allay, uh, allay um, uh, fears about uh, about revenue sharing. So I had a conversation with the state today, and um, prior to COVID, um, I don't have like a printout or anything with me. But prior to COVID, they hit revenue sharing like pretty much spot on. There are a variance of like half a percent to one percent. Obviously, COVID, uh, you know, either way uh, in the year, and um, and. You know, COVID has certainly introduced some uh, um, some uncertainty into their forecasts, but in fact, they've always erred um, conservative. So um, there hasn't been a situation since COVID where we've gotten less money from the state than than they said. In fact, um, in either we're going to get. Uh, I mean, this year is still out because we still need what, three or four more tax payments. Um, but in the years past, we've gotten quite a bit more. So I feel confident in the, in the state's process. Um, there is a state economist, um, but she does not um, you know, completely control that. There's a, there's a, um, there's a commission um, that, uh, that forecasts the, the state um, uh, economic outlook, and it's made of uh, independent uh, economists uh, around the state, not, not paid by the state. Uh, and so, yeah, I feel like they, they have a, They've had a pretty good track record in terms of revenue sharing, and and the outlook for Maine, uh, their website was was down just this afternoon uh, for maintenance. But the out the economic outlook for Maine, as relayed to me from by a man director who is our state economist uh, for this next year, um, there is certainly some potential uh, bumps in the roads and some some uncertainty, but it is not a dire outlook. And so um, I, I feel pretty confident with the 90 percent. And so I'd be, I'd be, uh, I realize I'd only be voting if someone was sick, but um, I'd be fine with option one. Further comments from the council? Councilor Peace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So. Option one, or even option uh, two, uh, do they take in consideration all the changes in public works and all that under 2A? So option one doesn't because you have more revenue sharing that we're capturing. Okay. Option two reduces the revenue sharing estimate from the 1.6 down to 976. So to balance that reduction in revenue, you have the initial five adjustments that were also included in option one with one change to the library's temporary wages. That gets you to $30.16. If we look at phasing in, like I mentioned, for the various positions, that would get you down to $30 even for a tax rate. But that is using, again, the lower revenue sharing estimate. Yeah, I'm comfortable with the tax rate being around uh, $30, 30, 30 and a quarter right in that area. Uh, I'm not real concerned of getting it down as far as 30 or even below. But I still say 31 is still too high. That's my opinion. Um, I don't know how we can change it. But and we're basing a lot of this on the school. So if you look currently the 3109 that you're seeing at the top, yep. that's with all the adjustments. That's with no other changes. That's where we were at going into this meeting. Like before today. So now I'm saying you have kind of two tracks. One track gives you higher revenue <coughs> sharing but keeps operations pretty much the same. The second track gives you still higher revenue sharing, but not as high as the right-hand side. But to get it down to 
3016, we use those same five adjustments to get it down to $30 even, that's when we start messing with operations. That's when we start phasing in the hiring of our vacant positions. Okay. Thank you. You're Councilor LaChapelle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we, we're not really working on the backs of the, li of the school. Uh, that same amount, that 797 is through all of them. So we're just talking about the school would stay at one position. All the other cuts are on the city side. That's correct. correct because okay. they were not, he felt generally comfortable with being able to talk more about that emergency legislation if it came to fruition. Um, but that's all that they have been able to talk about. So, so that's we're why we're basically I found not it. cutting anything from the schools. Other than that. Well, that's, that's no, it's not law right now, correct? Correct. So this was just in case they had the $800,000 in there. That would be correct. Okay. So we're not affecting the school system. That's Even correct. if we go to option 2A, we're not affecting the school system. Right, because I can't speak for the school part. Correct. Well, no, but this council can put a, correct. We can't speak for the school department either, but we can you say can do whatever. bottom line. Bottom I line, correct. Yes, I was worried about the city side. Okay, so the city side is going uh, a net change. If we go just follow, I'm just trying to get, follow along. Option 2A, it's 0.6% change. Two is 1.6% change. And then one is 0% change, but up to 90% instead of 85%. Correct. Okay. In your years of doing this, uh, both of you are well experienced at um, your confidence level in 85 to 90%. Which one, from your professional standpoint, which one do you feel most comfortable in for the percentage of state revenue, us looking at the state revenue side? If I would not feel comfortable if we were not reserving fund balance. That's why I'm presenting this hand in hand. It's like a yin and yang thing. That's the, on, whoops, that's the only reason I am even looking at that. Because otherwise, if we didn't reserve fund balance and we did 90%, it would not give me the warm fuzzies. So if we did the, I'm leaning towards the 85%, obviously. Um, if, if we did the 85 or 90%, what does that leave us in our fund balance? It leaves, right now the floor and the ceiling are such that the council generally, after we go through this process, has always hovered right around the 10% spot. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the second to last page at the bottom, You'll see a total of 11,793.70? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, right below that, we started out at a fund balance <coughs> of 17.82%. Mm -hmm. This is assuming, this is assuming 90%. So if you look right above that 11 million, I'm, I'm grabbing that whole $1.5 million or $1.6 million in revenue sharing. So this is the worst case scenario in fund balance. I wanted to see mm -hmm. how the numbers played out. And that gets us right to 10.16%. Last year, once we went through the process, we are at, I believe, 10.34%. So we're right in that sweet spot that the council has always stayed at. And if we were at 85, where we would where would we be? We would be higher, obviously, because, yeah, because you're, I'm thinking probably in 10. the 10.25, 10. Yes, probably in that range. And then we'd still have to sit down and look at um, the LCIP section, correct? Correct. Um, I guess I'm going to echo um, 
Councillor McCarthy, that I know is not here, but in speaking to him, um, yeah, with this. I, I guess I'd be, jeez, I'm leaning towards 30, uh, excuse me, 2A, and phasing in some of them, and that's at that 30, keeping the 85%. That, that's just my early assessment. And then is there something, and it's just looking at um, the LCIP, because we have some tough decisions to make on the LCIP also. Some really tough decisions. So does yeah, this is a one-two punch? Um, so that's just sharing with you what my thought is, and I, I'm sure Council McCarthy is in that same realm also. Councilor Herman, thank you. So with us reserving this portion of fund balance, um, if we do get the full amount of revenue sharing as as we usually have that just goes right back into fund balance yes it, it goes back into the unreserved undesignated okay and we could use that amount for FY 25 mm -hmm. so if we're reserving either the nine either the difference between 90 and 77 or 85 and 77 we're effectively covering ourselves as if we're at 77 percent um, we just have less in fund balance to work with. We're, we're utilizing a fund balance to get that comfort level. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, what's the other thing? Oh, so you said the superintendent felt pretty confident that they could, that the schools could get down to the $1.34 level? That is my understanding. Okay. All right, thank you. And the, um, so e even with the worst case uh, scenario here, Administrator Hunter, uh, we still are above the 10% mark by nearly a quarter, quarter of a million dollars, correct? That's correct. And we are only going to be needing to dip into uh, that 10% uh, fund balance in the case of, of what, some extreme emergency or? Pretty much from that standpoint, it's emergencies. If we had something um, from a purchase, like a, like the, the changes, the supplemental appropriations we did this year, like uh, if we had a pricing advantage, so we didn't have to do a lead time, some of those may, so those wouldn't necessarily be an emergency, but they would provide not only a financial savings and you know a more immediate turnaround time on whatever we were looking at purchasing. Those are typically the the instances where you might do a supplemental appropriation. Okay, and um, you're saying uh, this is just some uh, some um, some example, but if we were going to purchase, you know, let's say a CD vehicle, and we somehow purchased it now at a discount rather than later, like that could be an appropriate use of fund balance. Yes. Okay. Uh, and are we anticipating any of those kinds of purchases uh, during FY24? My crystal ball is not working right now, but not at this point. <laughs> uh, okay. Like there's there's nothing planned or no. nothing on nothing on the horizon. When you do a supplemental appropriation, none of those are planned. Right. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you. Further comments from the council? Councillor Scott. Thank you. So I guess I would just ask moving forward where we go with this. So we've got school committee meeting on Monday evening. We've got the vote on the 3rd of May, correct? And the city council votes on it the 2nd. Is second. that how this goes or which, which one is it? I forgot. Um, we do the school city on May 2nd. On May 2nd and then, but the citywide vote for the school is- the is following Tuesday. The following Tuesday, okay. Okay. And when would you like a decision made? Do you want us, or do we have time to look at this a little bit more or do you want something that we can give you next week? 
What is our schedule um, next week? So we still have Tuesday, Thursday yep. blocked off for next week. Um, it would be great to kind of finalize things Tuesday because that way we could prepare the budget resolve for the agenda packet. Yep. Um, otherwise, if we wait till Thursday, that means the agenda get, probably will go out a little later than normal. Okay. And on the LCIP decision making on that particular piece, do we have to make those decisions by next week? Or no, can we, we, wait till the we June? are scheduled to approve the LCIP the first Tuesday of June. June. Okay. Yes. Okay. When do, we, when, do we, when, when do we go through all the LCIP again? When, when would you like to talk about LCIP? I have all of the stuff here. I've already incorporated what we've done to date. So if there are additional questions or comments. So we can talk about it tonight. Yep. Um, uh, sorry, just one point of clarification, Administrator Hunter. So, um, and understanding you before, you you have not really had a chance to, to chat with Jay uh, in depth really about anything, correct? Not on the LCIP now. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay. Um, yeah, I, I would say we're, I, I think we've uh, pretty much, unless other counselors have questions about the budget, I think we can move to LCIP at this point. Questions on the LCIP? Yes. Count, Councilor um, Lash Bell. Thank you. Um, so I'm looking at your deferred um, page, uh, last page. You have, you have them on both, both pages, I believe, second to last. That's from the That's the from that. It's, it's just the last page. Yeah. Okay, so they, so from 20, FY 24 LCIP, those were transferred from the LCIP, LCIP right into the regular budget. It would it was the, transferred to fund balance. To fund balance. To fund balance. So the only thing that's left on the LCIP is the last sheet. Okay, so, so I guess a couple of the fund balance questions. And okay. I can refresh my memory. I apologize. Uh, I just got this paper right here. Uh, like on the second to the last page, uh, Lewiston Technology upgrades 95. Uh, what was that for again? That were th that was part of the LCIP that got switched over. So that includes, and the IT director's here. So if he wants to jump up and help me out, I thought it was I'd... licensing, but it, no, it's. No. Um, Director Starr, please enlighten us. Sure, thanks. That's to upgrade our office software, our email software, to replace the rest of our copiers that were left over from our copier replacement program. And um, oh, let me grab the other one. I've got the other one right here. And um, one host replacement for our VMware host environment. Yes. That's okay. okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, the elevator upgrade for the library, uh, 115, um, is this the standard stuff that has to be done or upgrade by, what do you mean by upgrade? I would bring Mr. Turcott up. At my understanding, it's the controllers that need to be replaced. This was a project that was deferred from last year to this year. So, but otherwise, I would ask Willie to jump in on that. Yeah. Mr. Turcott. Yeah, the, the service company um, for the elevator has recommended this upgrade to bring everything up to code. It includes all the controls, buttons inside. ADA controls. There are some, it's an aging elevator. There are a few minor issues, you know, um, that need to be addressed in that process. Um, and we do have problems with that elevator on m almost monthly that we have to go in and make adjustments. This would eliminate those and bring it up to code. Okay. Thank so, you. So the LCIP in, also includes all the hydraulic components as well as the, um, controllers and things like that in there. So the insides and the outsides. And then, thank you. And then, um, uh, I see Director 
Brent check is here for 111, the vehicle upgrades from the LPI, LCIP. <coughs> Vehicles 1.5 million. And I, I, have, I have to admit, I didn't have a chance. To, I know you sent an email out. And oh, you didn't read it? <laughs> Who? Touche. <laughs> didn't say much. Touche. Yes, can you update me on where you're at on our on the sure. vehicle? Uh, we sent some pitches about yeah. where the rust and what the cost would be to repair that, as well as the downtime for that equipment. So for the three vehicles, we have those pitches attached. But you had recommendations of reducing one pickup truck um, in each category, the half ton and the three quarter ton. Mm -hmm. And we, we've got an alternative suggestion of getting rid of other things, but keeping one of those trucks. Um, so one can be deferred and one could, would still be replaced. We redu reduced both EV trucks um, to be deferred for another year. <coughs> the other recommendation was to go to a gas-powered litter picker and take out the new equipment by, in an exchange because that's our biggest complaint um, and it's get used three seasons out of the year. Um, so we're reducing down 302 where your recommendations were 329 thousands. So Councillor, what's left if it helps you to know what's left? <laughs> you have the landfill loader at 405,000. You have the asphalt recycling trailer at 55,000. You still have the two half ton pickup trucks at 95,000. You have one three quarter pickup truck at 52,000. You have two six-wheel plow trucks at 532,000, and you have a gas-powered litter picker at 125,000. Excellent. Thank you. A um, couple of my bigger questions would come on the next page. Um, you're talking about LC the LCIP, oh, okay. correct. Thank you. Um, and I'm just trying to follow with my notes also. Um, where's the Main Street Fire Station? Um, they're asking you're requesting now 3.7 million. And, and I guess I come back to, um, I, I, I would feel far more comfortable at 3.5 million, which is still $200,000 over what the other one costs. And I still, I, I guess we can dance the same dance. This is ridiculous how much money we're spending for design. For this. Uh, I would invite Jeff Bully up here to help me out here, as well as the fire chief. One thing I think um, in comparing the two, I think this one requires more road and infrastructure earthwork than North Temple did. And then we had additional land cost, acquisition costs for this. Okay, how much? Okay. Uh, can, can, yes, can somebody give me the breakdown on that? Engineer uh, Poli. <clears throat> uh, sure. I guess I'm, I'm not sure how much of a breakdown you're exactly looking for. What's the difference in land cost between the two properties? I'm not sure what the land cost was on the first one on so, North Temple. So I, I guess my question now comes in, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm just trying to better understand. $700,000 for design and engineering. $221,000 for professional services. 7.1 million for construction. But we also had a $710,000 um, surplus from building station four. So I'm recommending cutting 500,000. That's still giving you a $200,000 increase or surplus instead of a $700,000 surplus. In theory, it'd be a $200,000 surplus. If I, if I may, uh, <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Washapel. Uh, so I, I think, haven't we received a, um, a revised estimate of engineering costs? 
Yes. What design cost? Correct. They're dropping at $220,000, $220, which is still $300,000 shy than I think should be done. Right. We cut $100,000. Uh, we're able to from the engineering, one hundred and twenty dollars from the professional services for the clerk of the works. Um, that's where that two twenty dollars comes from. Okay. So let me stop you there just for a second. Clerk of the works is built into this budget right here? The clerk of the works is built the, into this? this the other, the, the two, uh, I think it was 220 for professional services. Okay, so, and again, thank you. I'm going to come back to uh, Administrator Hunter. We also have clerk of the works in another place for $145,000. So which clerk are we using? We're using the same clerk of the works. He's removing that. It was in the budget. We're taking it out of the budget because of that individual. That's why we decided to hire an independent contractor for the clerk of the works to do the armory, the police station, and this building. Because, Jeff, do you know how much, do you remember how much just for North Temple the clerk of the works cost us? I think, I think that's what the 220 was estimated at, to yes. hire a consultant. No, I'm so now we favor. get all yes. three buildings for what? we were looking at and, and a good investment yes. yes I'm all in favor for clerk of the works it's going to look over all of those I'm just trying to get down into an eight million dollar budget that I still think is five hundred thousand dollars too high so the clerk of the works is out of there that drops that down to the you, you took um, you took 120 out of the professional services so that's still leaving a hundred and twenty thousand dollars what is that for and I'm looking at the LCIP book, page 38, for anybody else that's You still following. have clerk of the work responsibilities right. for this piece. So how much are we paying for a clerk of the works, the $145,000 that we have in the budget? That's what we're estimating to cost for the police station. 145 just for the police station? Yes. How much is this individual going to get to cover police station, armory, uh, fire station? Is this person going to make three, four hundred thousand dollars? Hopefully not, because Brian's watching all his time cards. Hopefully. <laughs> well, what what does this person get? <laughs> I guess. Brian, how much is he paid per hour? He's paid a hundred dollars per hour, and w and the reason why we went that way, Council Pell, is the costs were. I was astounded when we started trying to get estimates for the clerk of the works which was close to two hundred thousand um, dollars to do just the police station so that was why we said we can't do this and then the amount of money they paid 220 for clerk of works for just North Temple so that's why we're like this is insane so um, we're limiting the time that he does work you know he has to submit monthly um, receipts to me before they get approved he basically calls me and sends me an email um, before he does anything and that's how I want it as these pro progress. Excellent, thank you. But my second grade math tells me real quickly at $1,000, uh, excuse me, $100 an hour working 40 hours a week, uh, working 50 hours, uh, 50 weeks of the year is still $200,000. He is not doing 40 hours a week to start right now. I mean, some weeks he'll do four hours, some weeks he'll do 15. Okay. Um, he is not doing the 40 hours a week. You know, the, that amount of time will increase once they start doing actual construction. Uh -huh. But right now we need his assistance in terms of, you know, with the, the police chief with purchasing those um, cameras and the uh, access controls, getting those things lined up, working with uh, Tom Platts and Associates, their architects. So you have to line stuff up. So we make sure that the whole process is, so, you know, as you build, you can't have, we don't want to build a right. wall and then have to tear it out to put electrical work I'm in. totally in agreement with him. So yes, 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 yes. So let's just say he's $225,000. He's not going to be. We have not okay. budgeted That's, that much for okay. the police station. Well, we obviously have because we got $145,000 in the other LCIP, which is the 145,000 that you're keeping in, and we still get another hundred and twenty-one thousand dollars right here, so that's two hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars. On what would have cost us over four hundred, which would have been four hundred and forty thousand dollars if we went with the pricing that we had for just North Temple. What, I, again, I have no problem with two hundred and sixty-four thousand dollars. I'm just trying to get to the basis, but then we still okay. Thank you. We're still design and engineering of $700,000. Somebody walk me through 
how we get to seven hundred thousand dollars. Jeff, do you have your email that you sent to us? I do. Um, okay, can you go just down the list? Yeah. Well, I have it right here. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like he has it available in multiple formats. Please, please read it from one, uh, Mr. Boley. Um, well, I'll just add that a lot of these, the design is already underway for the fire station. So, um, so a lot of these consultant contracts are already in place. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the architecture, uh, if you want me to, you want go, to go through all of them? All right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, architecture was 352895 um, but actually the redesign of the, the building itself is only 51000 out of that, um, including structural and HVAC. A lot of that is, is construction management um, over the 14-month design. Uh, design time. Uh, we have um, legal fees for the uh, closing on the property, 5700 We have um, the property costs are 166000 We have a wetlands um, delineation, 4800 uh, Geotech um, borings and and report uh, about 13,800 um, some test pits 979 <clears throat> we have um, the site survey 6,800 uh, Goral Palmer for design of the uh, the site and the road and the permitting required 49,000 um, can you repeat that again please 49 242 49 for design of the road design of the road the utilities and the site work so stormwater the parking lot um, and the uh, permitting application for the planning board okay. and then some um, in-house charges about uh, 2500 dollars so far so so that puts the engineering work around 450 which um, is a lot less than the 700, but we did have the um, property costs that were not budgeted separately. $166,000. Right. right. One second, I'm just doing math real quick. Please bear with me. Uh, while you're doing math, Councillor LaChapelle, I will recognize Councillor Pease. Thank you. Did you say it was forty-nine thousand dollars for the road? Design. For the road design, uh, road the utilities design. for the road to get extend the utilities from Allison Way to the site, right. and for the design of the site itself, uh, the parking, the the grading, the stormwater design, um, and okay. the and the permitting application for the planning board. And we don't do any of that in house. No. No. We we could, but we we just we we don't have the the manpower. Uh, <laughs> Councillor, um, or sorry, anything else, Councillor Pease? Uh, uh, Councillor La Chapelle. Yes, yeah. It's just coming back to the first one, the, the design and engineering. You said three hundred and fifty-two thousand eight ninety-five, but we're only fifty-one thousand dollars was for the redesign of the building. Of the redesign of right. the building, the changes, of changes changing, changes to the building flipping itself, flipping it to the other side, eliminating a bay. Right. Correct. And what is the rest of that three fifty two? So that three, what's the rest of the three hundred thousand dollars go to? Is that what you uh, just gave me the breakdown? No, that's so, in addition to that other stuff. The bulk, like I said, the bulk of that is construction management, coming to meetings weekly for the. 14 month duration of the construction okay, um, I guess answering I'll, design the questions the contractor that come up. coming the architect coming to that is that correct jeff right the architect okay. $300,000 for the architect to come to the city of lewiston to make sure 
Okay. So how, uh, maybe I'm, I'm going around it the wrong way. How did we get a $700,000 surplus on the other fire station and we're not going to have it on this one? Where, where's we the We haven't difference? gone to bid on the construction cup piece yet. Mm -hmm. And that's part of where that surplus was on the last one. We're making a smaller building and okay i guess we can dance this all day long i no i i say 303.5 million i would cut another uh, three hundred thousand dollars out of that that's my feelings on it um, I, we're obviously not seeing or i'm not seeing something um i've built enough buildings and i have never built a fire station and I'm support of the fire station. I'm support of the fire department. Yes, we need another one. Um, I just don't want to build in a half a million dollar cushion someplace. I feel that we're allowing a two hundred thousand dollar cushion for any any design changes. So we we came up with that, that quick math. Quick math that he, um, the director just gave me is about three hundred and twelve thousand um, dollars. Plus the cost of the land. Are you no, the cost of the land was the, in that 166. That? 166. It's about $312,000. And Jeff, everything's been awarded with the exception of the construction through Finance Committee, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. So the Finance Committee has also vetted each phase of this. The only thing that's left is the actual construction RFP. So they've we gone through all of the contracts. They've gone through everything. Because this is the last piece that's left, is the actual construction. Wonderful. I disagree 100%. I cannot in good conscience sit here and just, it just seems like it's a padding on here, that we're padding in another five, half a million dollars for, and then the next fire station, we're going to have a, six hundred thousand dollars so so we're looking at cutting budgets and trying to make it tight uh, why build in a savings account automatically cut cut that cut another three hundred thousand dollars it helps us on that bottom line which is still a two hundred thousand dollar still a two hundred thousand dollar buffer from the previous fire station and it's smaller so, and i will talk with the finance committee after so if what? i could just add that it, it the build the footprint is the same it's just it's going to have one less bay. That bay is going to be turned into storage area. It is the same size building. And that construction was pre-COVID for North Temple, correct? I was just it was. So that. this in the LCIP, what you have. So the last time we talked about this, I was confused, and I sent the council an email, hopefully clarifying some of that. And that's where I came up with that two hundred twenty thousand dollar reduction, I believe, from design and engineering. So. All of these, when I made this, this was last November, December, uh, and it was 100% based on the North Temple Street Station build. Um, I, I talked to the architect, I said, you know, it's a substantially similar building, how much have construction costs gone up? And that's what I, I used his numbers to get this. I'm not an architect, I'm not a construction estimator. I did the best that I could. Um, looking at the numbers and we're talking, with Jeff and what we've spent so far on engineering and what we're projecting additional costs, including um, the clerk of the works. I said, I was comfortable saying we can cut $220,000 right now from that design and engineering estimate. The construction estimate, I also added in that email that I was not confident cutting that at all right now because I don't know what the bids are gonna come back at. We possibly could be, have a seven hundred thousand dollar surplus but i don't know i can't predict that right now i would also like to add if any of these projects come significantly under what is initially approved we don't have to bond for that we we correct or rescind the surplus before we bond we wait almost a year if not a year and a half in some instances before we actually issue debt on this okay so where did that seven hundred thousand dollars come from that was bonded was it because not? there was a different philosophy 
at the time that if there were any surpluses, they knew we had two more of those, we just r roll them and then keep rolling them until we get to the last one and then make the final adjustments. You're also talking pre-COVID to post-COVID on construction costs. So you're not comparing apples to apples. And that's the only contract that's left. So what you're saying right now makes a lot more sense if you're not going to bond it. So if we're just bonding the four point something and in, in, it's not like it's a built in savings account now. So not paying interest to make a savings account. That looked like a $700,000 savings account. Right. Thank you. I know Linda had some, Council Scott had some questions. And one, uh, I, I guess just one question, uh, Councilor Scott first. Uh, so what is the, um, uh, what was the contingency on the last, uh, uh, on the Temple Street? I don't have that. Mark, do you know? So you? was that part of the savings that, um, that it, the contractor came in on budget and we didn't need to use the contingency it was, it that was, was set a, aside? It was a variety of pieces. I can okay. get that for you. All right. I, I guess, yeah, I'd be curious. And I assume some of the, the seven million that's set aside for, um, uh, for Molson Way, this is um, a percentage of that is contingency. Yes, of course. Okay. Councillor Scott. Thank you. That is basically what I was going to talk about. So, and I can only come from a school perspective, but I know that in our facilities um, department, when we're building the school, there is there has to be a percentage of a contingency there in order to assure that the project can be finished, come to fruition, pay all the cost. If there's cost of you know piping goes up or whatever that sort of thing, so that's built into all of that. And I appreciate you answering that question about where we don't have to bond that because I think that's where that comes from that that would be my understanding on this project it's not like building it's not like building a house or building an apartment building there's it's a, there's a difference when it comes to municipalities and schools as far as funding these types sorts of projects isn't there or is it just the schools I just know the school stuff so the school has different roles because you have to meet state standards state right standards um, one of the pieces that again a different group, different administration, you know, at the time, is you're also borrowing. When we did North Temple, we were borrowing at a much lower rate than we would be borrowing now. So there was a comfort level that if there was a surplus, to bring it forward because the cost of borrowing was so much lower than it is now as well. Makes sense, too. I'm all set. Councilor Harriman. Thank you. Um, another difference with this station is I guess the North Temple station is basically right on North Temple Street, and this one we have to build a road of several hundred feet, right? That is correct. So that I assume that adds. I, I don't know how much. But I think we estimated around 350, 360 to the project cost for that road. Okay. Thank you. I guess my concern that if we don't uh, fund some of these, um, you know, the architect, engineering, so forth, um, I mean, these are third party contractors. They're not going to suddenly uh, do the project for less. And um, yeah, then, then we'll just simply be stuck. Councilor or Administrator Hunter? The only thing I would add is those have all been awarded. So it's the only done. thing that we're going to be stuck on is the actual construction cost. Councilor LaChapelle, did you? Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's, it's easy to see how somebody can understand when it looks at the bottom line and it says uh, $4,002,093 to be bonded, to be bonded, not to, not saying that this is going to be, we're going to bond up to $4 million. It's going to be bonding $4 million. So when I'm looking at the paperwork, that's how you, you clarify that, yeah, if we don't need it, we're not going to bond it. I just don't want to pay money on, well, first, I think it's too expensive. And second, I don't want to pay money on, pay money on money that's just sitting in the bank. Yes, sitting and over the past, you might recall, and it's not so much this year because we used so much in prior years and we didn't have the bond premium that we had in the past, but you might recall when we did the LCIP, we also allocated 
a bunch of surplus funding to pay down the LCIP. So we didn't bond new money for those. Because we had accumulated earnings, we had bond premium, we had project surplus. All of those reduced the cost of borrowing for that particular LCIP in that year. Just like we convert some to fund balance. You have like four different pots before we go to actually issue debt. And just knowing that, thank you, thank you for the explanation, but just knowing that we still have to cut some money out of this LCIP, right. and 100,000 here, 100,000 there can make a big difference as we're going through. Um, the other question I noticed in the fueling station, thank you for, I'm sorry, thank you, Chief. Thank you. I, well, and maybe, well, it's too late now, so never mind. Um, Don't I, go home just yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just wondering why we needed that much, that much storage, but the design is done. <coughs> it's nothing we can do at this point. Uh, what's the when's the next fire department planned, or what's the story on that? <coughs> is that something that we are still looking for a location? Okay. So, one of the things because we are not successful in finding a location. We're looking at what it would cost to significantly rehab that. And don't forget, we have an earmark on that one, or a discretionary grant of a million, I think it was at a full mil million dollars yeah. on that. Okay. So we're gonna start looking at that 24, 25, when is that starting to be looked at? Well, we're doing 24 now, mm -hmm. so it'd be 25, 26. 25, 26. Yes. But when do we start getting into the weeds on it, designing it or, or any of that stuff? It would be in the 25. In the 25. LCIP. Okay. Okay. Thank you. If I'm here, I'm, yes, we'll look at it deeper. Um, thank you for the fuel station design construction dropping that down to the um, 1.9. That's just shaving off $330,000. Um, the sidewalk maintenance rehabilitation, what did you? Um, what did I strip out of there? Yeah. So you might recall we had four areas that were part of the TIF program. Mm -hmm. Two of the four did not really need upgrades. And since the TIF is not moving forward as fast as we thought. Okay. We did the two that really needed it and put the other two on hold. And that's the same with the street as well. That, okay. So that was, I wanted to address that whole TIF yep. area that nothing's happening, so we shouldn't be designing, we shouldn't be putting any money into it until something happens. Yes, but there are two areas that, and, and they're small dollars mm -hmm. in comparison to the other two that would enable some work to be done in that area because to Councillor Scott's point, there has not been a lot of attention in that area. And, and that included Bridge Street, right? I think Marianne and I talked about this the other day, but I can't remember exactly which one it was. Director Brunchett, can you come to the podium, please? Oh, I'm coming to you, don't worry. I don't have Bridge Street on my list specifically, but the two that we talked about still continuing within the TIF area was West Bates and oh, yeah. Summer. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Stay right there. C Councillor, um, you all set, Councillor? Okay. Um, Councillor Peace. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I was looking at the pictures that you uh, sent. Um, I think it was pretty poor the way you sent those pictures. Uh, they're showing me a couple of rust spots. They're not showing me anything. Uh, well, how many vehicles did you take pictures of that you're replacing? You know, uh, this is it's a lot of money to replace these vehicles. Um, I don't know why we can't, f if it's just rust, I don't know why we can't fix it in-house, first off. Second off, the, the, uh, the school department has a uh, good body program. They could do work. It's like, we got to start thinking creatively. Uh, you know, when you have a vehicle that's uh, only got 42,000 miles on it and you want to replace it, and it's only costing you uh, $400 a year to operate it, 
where, where's the logic there? You know, there's, a lot, there's some vehicles that I'm saying, gee, the, <laughs> I've said it before, the, the county just bought a vehicle for, that has 96,000 miles on it. You know, um, I, I'm going to need more pictures or, or see something or even a tour down there. So I was going to say, you're guys. very welcome to come down and see them in person. Uh, uh, the other thing is, I, I saw that there was, on a different subject, there's Bridge Street, $50,000 for repair. Mm -hmm. There's just three stones gone. Where's this $50,000 going? There's more damage than that. This is a report that comes from the state. They do all our inspections on the bridges. It was deferred last year to wait another year. And the abutments are missing a lot more than three stones. It's incredible. Would you like me to take my camera out and show you? You certainly can come a trip down and we can give you the report for Bridge Street as well. But that already was deferred and it's going to be a much more expensive bridge repair if it falls in. So repairing the abutments is a low cost improvement for a bridge. All right. You say the state is the ones that said that it's going to cost 50000 or is that something we came up with? We, we do the estimating. They do the reporting. And we have a very detailed report on that, if you'd like me to share that. Yes, I would. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councilor Scott. Thank you. I, I would just like to remind the council that that particular neighborhood, when traffic is moving in and out of that neighborhood, Bridge Street is one of the most driven and most high traffic areas in that neighborhood because it is extremely difficult to take a left-hand turn out of that neighborhood from anywhere with anything from river from riverside to arch to i mean all of them you just cannot get out of there so when you're leaving in the morning and there's people going to work that is bridge street is one of the most traveled areas for the for the neighborhood down there to go in and out because then they connect to behind the set the hospital and go to the light to actually get out so I, I just say that I think that that particular I, I understood about the other TIF pieces but I really think that we need to ensure that that is taken care of though I too would like to see the report but I, I just would be concerned that we would defer that or put that off for another year because that's a highly driven area a lot of traffic there um, <coughs> uh -oh. One, one, uh, one second, councillors. Um, Councillor Herman. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to point out that the email that we got from Public Works, um, they were originally asking for six pickup trucks, and they've reduced it to three. And the, the one with 42,000 miles, the one with 43,000 miles, those have both been deferred. So they're, they're just asking for three and not replacing those two plus one more at this time. They're just looking for the three that are in the worst shape. Thank you. I guess my concern, um, heading back to uh, sidewalks and roads, my concern with uh, deferring maintenance and work is that um, not only will it simply be uh, possibly more expensive later um, if there's uh, an increase in um, you know, the need for repair, uh, I, you know, we, we have such a, a short construction window here in Maine, I'm not sure that uh, we'll be able to uh, catch up um, so yeah, I, I'm concerned about timelines and, and costs in the future. And it's, it's one of those things where it's very easy to, um, to put it off. Um, and perhaps we could, but I'm not uh, positive that would be uh, doing us any favors in the future. Councilor LaChapelle. Um, so moving down to this, this page, um, on your fourth page here, the school department. Um, we're looking at these one, two, three, four, five, six, <coughs> six projects. That still. So let me step, take a step back. We have four projects that we're looking to to bond, and we're how much over already? Okay, so we're looking at four city projects to bond. And then we have six school projects to bond. Mm -hmm. So right now, we're looking at a budget of thirteen million one ninety seven nine ninety two. So you, depending on if we use the eighty percent debt limitation that's on the books, mm -hmm. we're still about five point nine million over that limitation. Wow. And, 
Like, so I guess I'm not, yeah, in the entire school thing is only 3.3 million. Correct. So no matter how you no slice, how it, you slice it, we're. Hence why I did all three just to see if the there. CIP would give us enough. And even that, we're still over. So I, I would recommend that we um, that we just keep the roof repairs for Montello, McMahon, and Lewis in high school, and um, the Montello, the exterior upgrades, the playground addition, and the district modular upgrades. I would recommend that we do not approve. And, and I know the eighty-six thousand dollars for the exterior upgrades. He says is important. Um, but that's still that's still putting two point seven million dollars on the school side onto it. Yep. Um, in conjunction, that's just my opinion. Um, and where, so where does that leave us? Let's say we're at uh, okay, some nine, okay, ten, eleven, twelve. That's approximately twelve million dollars. <coughs> We have to to bond. That puts us higher than the eighty percent, and we went over last year, didn't oh, yeah. did we not? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We went way over last year. We went, was it one hundred and twenty percent last year? That sounds about right, but I can pull that. Just, yeah, just looking at the ballpark. So does that put us at 100%? Mm -hmm. Oh, let me see. Well, you looked that up, Administrator Hunter. Um, Councillor Scott, uh, Monday night school is a school night meeting, right? Yes. Okay. And or school committee meeting, sorry. Yes. Uh, and I assume you'll also be discussing LCIP then as well. I'm not sure. Oh. I don't know. I have no purview over the agenda, so I don't know what. It, is the agenda is. out for that or? Today's Thursday. I don't know. Is it out? I haven't seen it yet. Let me take a look. And just to clarify, so you're talking about six. 600,086, that's for the Montello exterior, Geiger playground, and the district module upgrades. Correct. Okay. Keep in there the three largest budget items. It's still 2.7 million. And we're still over 100%. We're still over we're still 100%. Over 100%. Yeah, because 100% of the limit was a million, I'm sorry, 9,140,000. So we're, we're over 100% even just with us. Yes. Never mind. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, can we put a school with the fire department in the same? No, I'm sorry. I'm just... Administrator Hunter, we uh, we're required to do the f fueling station at this time, correct? Um, I would defer to. The, I think it is due this year. I think we deferred part of it last year, correct, Marianne? Yeah. Um, Councillor uh, Councilor Herman. Thank you. And um, just to clarify that that 80% limit is in our ordinance, but we can go over it if we have five votes. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Scott. Thank you. Um, we do not have that on our agenda for Monday evening, but I can send out, I would make the assumption that um, they would look for a recommendation from the facilities committee on having a discussion around those LCIP pieces. And I will send an email out as I am also on the facilities committee for the school committee and I'll send an email out tomorrow to Bill Grant to set that up so that we can have that discussion immediately. Thank you, Councilor yeah. Scott. Uh, and Administrator Hunter, when, when do we need to come to conclusions about uh, the LCIP? You are scheduled to vote on that, I believe it's May 2nd. June second. I'm sorry. June. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we we have Six. several <laughs> weeks still, as it turns out. Yes. Okay. Any further uh, comments from councilors at this time? Uh, councilor Peace. Uh, we will. 
give Councillor Pease a minute. Uh, you and you are um, as soon as uh, Jake comes or Superintendent Langless comes back, uh, you'll be meeting with him. Yes. Excellent. Councillor uh, Councillor Pease. This is back to Public Works. Um, I know we have a lot of roof membranes that we're supposed to be replacing. The one for uh, at Public Works, that's $50,000 in addition to the uh, uh, $380,000 that we had already funded. There isn't already anything funded for the Public Works roof yet. This is just the design construction would be coming in 25. Oh. Well, it was on 51, but that's just, that's just showing the 50. Well, I'm trying to figure out where I got that 380. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. The design three. will give us the construction estimate for the 25 LCIP. Under the project subscriptions, it says 380 previously funded. Mm -hmm. I think that's an incorrect note. Page 51. Yeah. Yeah. Under the project description, page right. 51. <laughs> I'll get clarification on that and get back to you okay the other question while you're checking on that one I'd appreciate can you tell me why uh, or first off I <laughs> slow down here a little bit Thank you. what the mill is on the membrane is it a 45 or a 60 uh, why is it most manufacturers show a, a 30 year warranty and you only show it whoever's doing is a 20 year and then we still have to turn around and spend two thousand dollars a year just to inspect it louis i'm going to i'm going to ask louis to answer that question he doesn't know the answer though we'll find that out for you okay because it says uh one year after installation the roof membrane program will cost <coughs> us two thousand dollars a year if it's a 20-year program that's another forty thousand dollars We'll look at that maintenance program to see what it includes. Okay. And they do the same thing for the, all the schools. And that's why I'm trying to figure out why is, it, why is it set up that way. I don't know what their cost is for their maintenance programs either. Okay. If you could get that information, I'd appreciate mm -hmm. it. Thank you. Uh, uh, back to you, Councillor LaChapelle. Thank you. Uh, for Administrator Hunter. Um, I'm looking on, again on your last page uh, going down our comprehensive plan implementation, 50,000. Um, was that, was it 100,000 and we went down to 50 or was it 50 and I suggested going down to 25? It was 50 and suggested to go to 25. And we, we kept it at the 50 there. Um, so if we cut some well, of the- wait, wait, wait. What are you looking at? Oh, I understand, but which sheet? Uh, last, your fourth last page, your last page of, of your okay, paperwork so, that you sent so out. The, so it went to 50 to other sources. So now it's on fund balance at 50, and then you reduced it on the fund balance to 25. <coughs> so if you look on line 96, Oh, that other, okay, yep. thank you. Okay, that's where. Thank you. You can navigate this far easier than I can. Thank you <laughs> so much. I've been looking much. at it a lot for the last <laughs> yeah. three days. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. And, and I have to apologize in, in advance and to all the other department heads. I'm not trying to be nitpicky. We're just trying to, to make everybody happy and obviously not everybody's going to be happy and, and trying to be some kind of a, a, a good steward and yes so thank you um, I guess further any, uh, Councillor Pease 
Thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I have to second that. We're not here to beat every department up and nitpick every little item, but there are a lot of them, items that I myself have to admit I'm not 100% familiar with and I like explanations on and I want to know why things are done the way they are and why it costs us so much every year extra for a project that we approved on two years prior. This is just information I'm trying to get at. I know you all work real hard on your budgets. You all try to save as much as you can. Uh, we get the dirty job. We have to tell you you didn't do it good enough. We, we know you probably did. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, Administrator Hunter, uh, we should be planning for Tuesday, correct? Yes, because right now I only have three votes for option number one and I think maybe one vote for option 2A. We will go home and think about it. Okay. Um, I really appreciate uh, the work that you put into these options. Thank you, uh, both of you, very much. Uh, thank you, directors. And um, yeah, unless there's anything further from counselors, that will uh, conclude this evening's budget meeting. Have a wonderful evening, Lewiston.